Jehova Malak, Ola Malamad. Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantakreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Elda at Jehova, El Emuna Jehova. I Basilian Kurios, Otios, O Pantakreta. Basilios Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehova Gadol, Jehova Gadol, Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkenu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath. In the cherishing and this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry, of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to understand in this pale blue dot, which was been sent in 1977 to be as a spaceship. And in 1990, it has come up with this result. This is called as a Voyager spaceship on a mission to explore our solar system and interstellar space. It was sent in September 1977. In February 1990, after traveling a mind-boggling 3.7 billion miles or 6 billion kilometers, it sent some pictures back to Earth, and scientists noticed a tiny bluish white speck dangling in a beam of sunlight, passing through Saturn's ring, which is one of the planet. It was planet Earth, only the size of a pixel. And this now famous picture has come to be known as the Pale Blue, t blue Dot. P-A-L-E, Pale Blue Dot. Without the word why they kept Pale, but we have something always we tell for you. Look upon the Pale wonders of the great word of God. The word Pale means marvelous things what Lord our God has done in the Hebrew. That's why we ask you always to sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique Pale wonders of this word. But here these people, the scientists named it as a Pale blue, blue dot. And it is just like a small size of a pixel. And over here, the reason why we look over here is that Emmanuel, what shall be called to be God with us, he never forgot 
us to be visited. So we need to look over here, it says that. In this vast universe, we are but a mote suspended in a sunbeam. To think of all the generations that have come and gone, the kingdoms, the empires that have arisen and have fallen, the births and deaths, the joys and sorrows, the wars and famines, the sufferings and horrible atrocities committed, all transpiring on that pale blue dot. Yet we were not left to our own devices. We were visited. Why? Because the fallen creature that inhabits the pale blue dot was created in the image of its maker. Genesis 1, 27. The fallen angels had no such visitation or redemption. We don't really know when Christ was born, but since the world recognizes this as the date, it is a good opportunity for us to speak of the glorious fact of the Incarnation. The Incarnation is the most wonderful truth you will ever discover in the Bible. Of course, without Christ's death and resurrection, it would have been ineffectual for us. God was manifested in the flesh. God with us. Christ came who is over all the eternally blessed God. And then we need to look as George Wigram, a Christian brother from the past era, once said, I would be ashamed to be called a man were, were it not for the incarnation. And this is very, very important. We would be ashamed to be called as a human race. If it were not by the grace of Lord God to redeem us through the process of incarnation and then his plan which God the Father has given him, the very great and unique plan, what he executed for us through incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension and session. So when he meant, when, which George Wigram meant, was that when we consider our shameful and sinful track record, that is what we are, shameful and sinful track record, the abominable history of mankind, it would be a shame and embarrassment to belong to such a race except for the fact that Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, came to redeem us. In Romans 5 we read, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us as a substitute spiritual death on the cross. Jesus, Jehovah, our Savior, or Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, came to save us from our sins. The pale blue dot would never be the same. The same of sinful and shameful track record. The same of abominable filth. The same thing which is so shameless an embarrassment for us to be into such race which we belong over here. The reason what we call this pale blue dot. And this pale blue dot, many nations arised, many nations fell. Many births and deaths, many joys and sorrows, many wars and famines, many sufferings and, and horrible atrocities being committed, all happening on that pale blue dot. Yet we were not left to our own devices. We were visited. The reason why? Because the fallen creatures that inhabited the pale blue dot was created in the image of its maker, known as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So on this pale blue dot, that is this earth, what we are now, the scientists call it as a pale blue dot, but we know very well. Our Lord of God in Psalms 85 verse 5, he teaches that, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. You know what is the word God over there? It is L410 chord, resembling to man. And this man, what he has been taught and learnt by Yehovah Elohim. No doubt, the world may have many things to teach you in the standards of its experience, empiricism and rationalism. But we have only one thing to walk by faith. And man in his entire lifetime uses three, these three perceptions, empiricism, rationalism and faith. But over here we have something great. It says, what God the Lord will speak. Every believer in the church age. To whom the word of Lord God came, we read in John 10, 35. They become gods to these people. By that we meant to say, showing the right way of Christ Jesus. Showing what is binding for them to do so that they could be saved. And as the things we read about Peter in chapter 10 of Acts, verse 4. 
The angel of Jehovah said to Cornelius what Peter would say that you are bound to do. In verse number 6, we looked at what he was being told. The same thing, what the man of God said. In 2 Kings chapter 7, it came to pass. And what we are today, as being the children of God, having to share the great pleasure of Baltimore privileges, what you tell that will come to pass, because he says in Psalms 85, 8, I will shamma and hear what God the Lord will speak. When you grow up to be the word of God, as the word says, open up your mouth in divine oracles. When you talk being seasoned with grace, that is called as a salt of the word of God. And what he has spoke, he spoke for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. His beautiful way of wise salvation life. He hasn't given this to anyone apart from Jacob. We read that in the past. But now for everyone in the church age, whosoever believes upon him shall never perish, but they have given to become the power, the sons of God, the tech non-believers in Christ. So we read over here, it says, I will hear what God L410 as a human being when you transform into the word of God, renovating the standards of your thinking. And no longer you are looking into the standards of this world, but you speak what the Bible doctrine teaches to you. That's what it has been called. So he says, I will hear Shammah, hear and obey, just not hear, but I will hear and put it into practice. That's the word Shammah. You hear to obey, if not, there is no need for you to hear. As the Lord God says, you who has a hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The reason what is claiming you as an hear, that meant to say, why well, you have a hear to hear and to perform it. But the people who have become dull of hearing, he says, not us in Hebrews 10. And the ears have become shut to the cry of the poor. Therefore, they go to cry to God about their problems. But Lord God will say, I will turn off my ear. The reason why you have the ear, the word for us, Ozen, which has been used in the Hebrew, meant to say to listen, divine revolution. Apart from that, there is nothing your ear can hear. And we read that. Who could be like my servant, said the Lord God, that is referring to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who was deaf to the world and blind to the world. He was only alive to the word of God. He was having enlightening to look what is the word of God and to teach. And he was listening only the divine revolution and to teach. That is what, what he was being taught from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 through 7. You have ears for what today, what you hear. You hear the rumors. You hear the murmurings. Or you hear the hearsays of false men. You know, a great, very great pain for us in First Samuel chapter 8. When they say to Samuel, shedding to the point, that this man is old and his sons do not walk in his path. Therefore, we require a king for us who could lead us. And there we learn some of the lessons of life. In the same manner, Samuel goes to Lord God, and Lord God said, They haven't rejected you, they have rejected me in spite of you. That is, you represent Jehovah, and they rejected you. Indirectly, they have rejected me. And he says, They haven't rejected you, they have rejected me to be their king. The failure of a father to train his children the way that they have to go, as we read in Psalms, uh, Proverbs 23, as well as verse number 11 and following. Spare not the rod, it is not going to kill your son, but discipline him. When you spare the rod to discipline, quite obviously such things will happen. The Samuel was the anointed one of the Lord God representing Jehovah at that time. They rejected him because the genealogy was not right. The children weren't being standard in the words which Bible doctrine demanded. The same thing with us as well today. The churches have been filled with the pastor teachers who have their sons to reign instead of the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher because of some property issues. They don't want to give it to the one who could lead it in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And then you would clearly find it to say and to teach them they haven't rejected the Lord God. They have rejected the truth. And they have come 
to a stage which they think even after they die, they will take their properties with them. Today's pulpits have been filled with such men. They have been rejected by the Lord God. They come to stand in your pulpits. And now we are in this case of 1 Samuel 8. We look people rejecting Samuel and the Lord God says to him, They haven't rejected you, they have rejected me. In the present Christendom, we find people as such who come to the pulpits who have been thoroughly rejected to be called in the sight of Lord God as reprobates because of their belly, because of their God to be this earth. And such ones, they think they can reign over you. And what a shame it is. Therefore, they did not become to hear the word of the Lord. He says, I will hear what Lord God the Lord the, what God the Lord will speak. God meant to say over here L four one zero, that is what you as a human being could become, and reveal to them by learning from the word of God. For he will speak peace unto his people. The Lord will speak to this man as God on this earth, representing as Moses God and Aaron to become as the prophet of God to Pharaoh. Likewise, Jehovah, our Lord of our God, speaks to this man, particularly beginning with Jehu Sharan, and then coming to the church age, Christians. What did he choose us? If you know it not that your God said long back in, jo in Job chapter 18, the same thing over there, if you are not acquainted that you have to be kings and priests to this world, the same thing he continued in the people of the past, Jehusha Ryan. The same thing he continues with us in the present as Christians. What we have to be, we have to be the gods to this world. And you forgot that and you live a life, you says in, he says in Job chapter 18, a wicked life, a life that could be destroyed completely. But if you're walking in the light, what a life it would be. We read that in Job 29. And that may assemble for many of the people to overhear as the standards of what you meant to say, the life of this morality or showing some good deeds or charity. But that's not. There we look something else in Job 29. The man over there, he talks, I was eyes to the blind, I was ears to the deaf, I broke the teeth of them. And is considering to teach what it will be when the light of Jehovah will talk. But today there aren't enough believers to come back and join the hands to do the will of God. To fight the Lord's battle. There aren't enough men today for us. Because they don't come to become an eyes to the people who are perishing. Or they don't come to become the things of teaching the word of truth through their lives. But over here he says, I will hear what God the Lord has spoken through you. And then we find, for he will speak what? Nothing but peace. The word peace is completeness or shalom for us in the Hebrew. And people will have that shalom to be as peace. But the word has a lot of meanings. It says completeness, complete welfare, soundness, having lot of tranquility, having good health, having prosperity, having peace. That's what the word for us in the end it would be. But in simple words, it is a prosperity, it's a great health for us. So he says that shalom to be in covenant of peace. So what does he speak? He speaks to us peace for whom unto his people. The word people is yami, nations. And now he comes unto his people and to his saints. The word saints over here is kasi'id. And Kasi'id meant to say for us, those who are faithful, godly, those who are in the standards of kindness, those who are showing merciful like pious activities in the Lord. And these are the people when he uses to say, like the standards of Gracious called as Canaan and Barak. Do you know what is the word Barak? To kneel. 
The word saints meant to say as many people don't understand today, they consider kneeling is just a fun. Like the rich young man who came to kneel and asked the master, show me the good way, or uh, saying, master, good, show me the way of eternal life. And he said, who is good? Anyone who has come in the form of flesh cannot. Because this pale blue dot, the things that are happening over here on this earth, and they do not understand what it is in this flesh, because this flesh, the Trinity of God, when we look in example of Judges chapter 6, when he was being said, to put that offering on a rock, he touched that with the end of the rod. That means on this earth which has been polluted, with complete evil. Therefore, he says in Galatians 1.5, from this present evil eon, age, the word translated world in the English not matched there. It calls for eon, the age, till the end of this age. Beginning with the church age and then followed by rapture and then the millennium. He says, till the end of this age, he has extirpated us. He has tore us apart and taken unto him because he knows that this world is evil and sick. So he says, who is good except God? And then God, he refers there, Theos, and for us in the Hebrew El, it meant to say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that God becoming God-man as a mediator between God and man in that he was God. And he was separated from the two things, that is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, in that he was true humanity. And he was separated from the entire humanity in that he was God sharing the deity of God called to be the true doctrine of kenosis. So that God became God-man and this rich young man comes and kneels down and he asks him, God, good teacher, show me the way of truth. And over here for us, when we call the faithful or the saints, it is meant to say the one who are faithful enough are holy ones or the pious ones. And they have their origin from Barak. The word Barak meant to say, as we read in the book of Daniel, when the power of Lord God's Holy Spirit comes upon him, there is no one who can stand. Even in Ezekiel, even in Jeremiah, we read that. Even in the standards of Book of Revolution, what do we read? They fell upon their knees and fall down. You haven't even really understood. What is this great privilege given to this mankind to tremble at his word? He cannot stand. The flesh cannot stand before the Lord. And now we are in the spirit looking face to face upon him. The time will come when we stand in the spirit, not in the flesh, having our standards of resurrection body to look upon him face to face. But now through his Holy Spirit, the word of God. And that what happens? We fell into upon our knees. Automatically you will fall. And these are the people he calls them to be the saints. And then he says in verse 85 of 8 of Psalms, I will hear what God, that is man who has grown up in the word of God, the Lord will speak. He will speak always completeness, soundness, perfect ones. Unto his people and unto his saints, the people referring to the Israel and the saints who are being grown up as gramati, as joining as disciples, having their affairs in the standards of kneeling down in his presence and doing his work. And then he says, but let them not turn again. What is the word turn? Take a U-turn, show, worship. He says, let them not take a U-turn for what? The word calls us to folly, kisael. And this kisael meant to say stupidity. And this kisael meant to say for us that silliness of life. And this is what they have become foolish to the cause. And today we shall learn for us in the standards of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 5, after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of Lord God. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn thy word, help us to become the people what you have intend us, intended us to be, the guards to this world, particularly to train them up in the path of truth and righteousness. 
Father, reaching those standards demands that every day we carry our cross and be the faithful disciple on this earth. And yet, many ones on this earth have forgot what you have taught them, O Lord. Since these are the rejected pastor teachers and so-called reverends and doctorates in the pulpits who are leading the people into cultism, apostasy, rather than rightly dividing the word of truth and teaching them, word by word, line by line, and precept upon precept in the proper standards of dispensations, and letting not go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. Once again, Father, we ask thy grace upon us to teach them, because nothing on this earth is more important for us, O Lord, than to erect your standards once again in the pulpits, and to lead the people which you have called to be the saints, the holy ones of you representing, always to be in complete soundness and making unbelievers to know what is the work when they become disciples in Christ. As we go and study these things, Father, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. We have for us in Deuteronomy chapter 33, when Moses is giving this discourse, particularly to understand that the word of the Lord God, which he commanded them, in verse 1 he says, this is the barak, or the word meant to say for us, blessing when you acquire from kneeling in the presence of Lord, wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed again the word barak, the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of his saints. Over here the saints are called as Kadosh, again the holy ones. But there what we read in Psalms 85, 8, these are the men who have acquired their entire life to be upon their knees and become the faithful ones to be proved in the presence of the Lord. So from his right hand went a fiery law of them, or fire of a law. That is what the word of Lord God is. When it has been said to Jeremiah in chapter 5, the words, what you speak will be a fire, and the people will be like a wood, and it would consume them. The same principle what we learn whenever we talk the word of Lord God, it's like a fire, because it is said in Hebrews 1, 7 as well that the ministers of the Lord God are a blazing fire. And where do you get the fire? And why do you get the fire? The fire is from the word of Lord God, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And what the people will listen to this fire, either they will be burnt off or they may not to be changed to the standards of the word of God. The people who are burnt off will say like the road to Amasmus in Luke 24, what the two people spoke. When Christ our Lord our God was speaking unto us, it was like a burning in our hearts. And they change. That's what it happens. What does the object when you burn off? It becomes into ash. It becomes into powder. Remembering that we are once again into the dust we are. We return back to the dust and there is nothing in us. So simply obeying the voice of Lord God, let's do the will of Lord God. That's what it happens when it burns off. But there are hardened people like Pharaoh who will not change. You know, they think they're great enough to have in their life their possessions of jealousy, mental attitude sins, their possessions of lusts and powers. That's what it is. It is a shame for us to be on this earth. Sinful, shameful nations these are. First of all, as he says in 1 Samuel chapter 8 to them, as they rejected me and they went to other gods, likewise they will do. Don't worry, they haven't rejected you, they have rejected me. Because that's what man is. And in Judges we conclude saying that man thought what is upright in his eyes and he went along to build them up. That's what the Hebrew word Asa is. And the word upright is Yashir. What he's thinking that is correct. What he's thinking is straightforward. What he's doing is rightful for him. That's what this man thinks, dear brethren. And that's a very sad part for us to look. Man thinks he's doing great. Man thinks he's doing perfect. Man thinks what in his own eyes. 
But we are here not to look upon that things. We are here to look what the Bible doctrine demands. And like Pharaoh, they harden their hearts. Like Pharaoh, they think that to them on this life, their possessions are greater than just turning out in the word of God and to be burnt and become powder so that he will not reconstruct it back again. Therefore, he says, you are dead to the world and alive to Christ. You are crucified to the world and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who liveth in me. And he claimed to live is Christ and to die is profitable. That what will happen if you come to the fiery law of the word of God. But you haven't met such pastors yet. You haven't met such pastor teachers yet who could speak the truth as it is in the Bible. Let us be alone then to be in the people of bad company who would assist in First Kings when we read the chapter of Second Kings. You know, the deceiving spirit which was been sent. And one of the prophet comes who in truth more than there are other prophets. And they said, go to battle. Everything will happen successful unto you. But this one who came in the upright one of the Lord God, he said, what has happened in the heaven I have seen? Who is going to deceive him? He said, by the mouth of the prophets, they will be deceived. And he said, if you go to the battle, you will die. But he did not believe he slapped him. And today, many deceiving men have come not to make you to look the fiery fire of the law of the word of God. And these are not the ministers from the word of God as Hebrew 1, 7 teaches to us. Even in Psalms, we read the same word. Why this will carry the fiery fire in them? The reason is that their righteousness, what they share, is from Jehovah. And Jehovah's righteousness cannot be changed for any cost. As Abraham was asked to give his own son to test what it was in his heart, so that be his obedience could be a blessing to many nations to come, like Abraham, even though his own son has been asked to be given to the Lord God, the fiery fire of the law of the word of God, which this pastor teaches, bona fide gifted one male believers, possess to do and to fulfill what is the Bible, they never care for anything on this earth. As we read that word in Psalms 119 and 158. They would grieve themselves when the people are not following the word of God and they would be with the word of God because they find the encouragement only from the word of Lord God, whether they are, even his own wife may not be with him. They don't mind, because it is better for them to stand alone than to be in a company that which is of lies and evil. What the Bible teaches for us in the New Testament, particularly Ephesians in the standards of this mystery epistles, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God, the polypicolous, much colored wisdom of Christ has to be made known to all nations. Now through the church. Right now, not that when you die. But now what the churches are running. Aren't they running, running gimmicks of the temporary spiritual gifts which have been seized after the completion of the canon of scripture? Aren't they running to you to look for miracles or healings or tongues? Aren't they deceiving the crowds to have entire mechanisms of their systems to tell such and such so that they could call out their names? But when already their names have been registered, they pass through the microphone to that idiot who has been there on the stage. And that one who thinks who has been really told by God, he claims their name. Aren't the gimmicks happening and running around in our midst? And moreover, Psalms 42 verses, of Psalms 41 verses 4 teaches to us, first, there should be healing of your soul. The marrow in your bones is the word of God. The health to your flesh is the word of God. The eyesight which falls upon your retina has to be the word of God. We find these words repeatedly in Proverbs 4 through 6 chapters. Until and unless you come to encounter or matza, 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 three times in Proverbs 8, 34. Until and unless you come to encounter the word of Lord God, you cannot encounter your life. 
and the war of Ladkat is a fiery fire of the law. That's what he said for them. With his fiery fire of the law, he wrote the Ten Commandments. Signifying for us, if you don't obey by believing not Christ to be your Savior, in the hell forever you would be. Signifying for us, as believers in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10-16, through 16, which teaches very clearly, the home how you build, take it. If you're building it up with gold, silver, and precious stones, or you're building it up with wood, air, or stubble, the day will come, the fiery judgment day of the Lord God, the house or the home, what you have built, it will be tested in the fire. And the things which abide there, they are your rewards. The things which don't abide there and the things which will burnt off, that is wood and stubble, you will lose your rewards. What have you done on this earth? But you yourself will be saved because your foundation was upon Christ. The fiery fire of the Lord God, you have to look for the first time when Peniel is the name kept by Jacob when he says, I have seen God. And in Genesis 17, before then, that what Jacob could record in 33rd or 34th chapter was penny ill. In 17th chapter of Genesis, Lord God appears to, Mo, to Abraham and says to him, Walk before me. The word before me, Pani Im. The origin of the word penny ill. If you go back and dig the word, it gives you Pani Im. And this Pani Im meant to say, walk before my face. And if he is having a fiery law in his face, we need to walk according to his fiery word of God to be constantly mindful. Because with him there is no excuse. If it is yes, it has to be yes. If it is no, it has to be no. Any other thing which you would love to replace and give reasons for it, he says, that's evil. The churches today, which aren't following the fiery law of the word of God, what the Bible says, every day carry your cross and make up yourself to be the disciple of the word of God every day. And if you say weekly ones, that reason is evil, throw it out. It will not sustain the fiery fire judgment of the Lord God tomorrow for spoiling the growth of the church. The pastor teaches the bona fide gift is poem and didaskalas. You would say I would become reverend, which is not at all a gift given to you in the standards of this permanence of the spiritual gifts mentioned in Ephesians 4. You are under the fiery law already in your life. You've already been rejected, having that title for you, reverence and doctorate, and you will become tomorrow most holy reverence as well. You will not hesitate to keep that title, which belongs only to my Christ. The fiery fire of the law says in Proverbs 8, Every day, blessed are they, Asherias, it is not blessed called as kneeling down as Bakar, but the word meant to say Asherias, who these are. These Assyrians are the one when he teaches to us very clearly, accurately. Those who wait upon the doorposts of the temple of the living word of God or the church. What for? To learn discourse, to learn Bible doctrine. And how every day, every day, every day. And if this is the rule, what he has given to be shalom or completeness or soundness or perfectness for us, and by changing this fiery law, you would have a great wrath of Lord God to abide. You are not walking before his face. Coming to the believers, the fiery law of the church age, you are called to be a king and priest. As a king, you need to write the word of God, Deuteronomy 17, 18. And followed by to become as a scribe. Because... Joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias is such the kingdom of God we read in Matthew 13, 52. So there he says, scribes, and over here as king, you need to write a copy of the law. He said, anyone who ascends to be as a king, 
And Christ told Lord our God says in John 18, As you say, I am a king, I have been born to witness the truth. And if the world recognizes us that we have to be as a king as per the word of Lord God, then you have to be as per the five will of the word of God as kings. And show us where is your written copy of the Bible. And you know what this Talmud would teach? If there is any mistake, you should write the second time. But you know what the word of Lord God teaches? You have to be the people to write three times. Once for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what every step you keep, you know there is a gap of three paces. And this every step, you have to be alert to look. You're growing up from milk, from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat, growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And that's what you have to be. And many people do not understand. What is this fiery law will abide upon us tomorrow? There will be very few who tremble at his word. That will be the growth of the church. As our Lord our God says, little flock be not be afraid. People coming for Bible doctrine with a true heart, they will be very few. But the people who want to hear something stupid, something as per the standards of this temporary spiritual gifts of miracles, healings or tongues, or idiotic prosperity gospels, which they want to say. The word says in Joshua 1, 9, Obey the word of Lord God and perform these things, and you will have success all the days of your life. They don't want to obey the word of Lord God, neither perform the things of Lord God. And they love to go back and look and hear prosperity gospels. And they think the prosperity gospels are coming or the, this prosperity comes to them because they give some great tithe every month to the preacher who is preaching there. You know, no business is minting money as today the pastors who are making prosperity gospels, men who are making by teaching them lies. Therefore, many great chapters dedicated in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 23, Ezekiel 34, Malachi 1 through 4 chapters, or 1 to 3 in the original Hebrew. Why these chapters have been dedicated for shepherds? Word to you, shepherds. The wrath of Lord God abides upon you, shepherds. The reason is that they have missed the fiery fire of the word of Lord God to reign in them. The fiery fire of the Lord God, it burns you out to become dust and into ashes. But if it hasn't worked out in you to burn your hearts, that meant to say already the preacher is preaching you what you would love to hear in your itching ears. As Second Timothy 4 writes for us and dedicates to our hand to carry the torch. He says for us in 2 Timothy 4, very clearly he teaches to us, stating people will not endure Hugiano doctrine, sound doctrine, hygiene doctrine, the doctrine which makes them to become the most high children of Lord God to be representing to these people what is the way of peace, what is the way that a godly saint lives. But the foolish ones will take a U-turn, he says. The stupid ones, who are the stupid ones who haven't been burnt in the fire of the word of the Lord God? They would say, we are happy with our life going weekly ones, though the Bible says every day you need to assemble. They are happy to say we will, we will partake in the elements of the Lord God monthly ones, though the Bible says every day you need to partake in the elements of the word of Lord God. That is what the Lord's table, the only ritual given to us in reality, remembering him when he said, do this in my remembrance. And yet these people, they would say we are weekly ones, we are monthly ones. Because these aren't burnt with the fire and the fear of the word of Lord God. In Isaiah 66, he says, The Lord God is seeking and searching those who are contrite and humble in spirit. Contrite pounded into powder. Humble, complete subjection. And what do they do? He teaches to us those who are contrite and humble in spirit, they tremble at the word of Lord God like a shaking, quivering ones. Are you shaking? Are you quivering? 
Today it may be fun for you to read the Bible without even looking what it is meant to say in the original Hebrew, in the original Greek, original Aramaic. You might be just enjoying your lifetime on this earth to say, I am so many years old of a pastor. That is not representing your pastor work. It is representing your silly, foolish activities of your mind, which you fail to look what the word of Lord God accurately demands. If you have been given this bona fide gift, the burden of the pastor teacher, Colossians 1, 24 through 29. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13. That's the purpose of being given you this gift. How we would make everyone to be perfect and complete? Do you think this iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, what has been given for us in the Bible, is just for a fun? Why did Christ our Lord our God mention that? You know, every instant of the word, whether it is L410 or it is 430 or 433, the codes which have been given by strong code number, you have to learn by that in the standards of interlinear at least to look because your translations haven't given to you those numbers. And you will not understand if it is 410, it is the mighty God. Or in the standards of Isaiah, when we read that, Lord God became flesh, he says, long back, mighty God, 410. And that flesh she says, now every believer before the foundation of the world who has been kept alive, you have to realize one thing. The church comes from the body of Christ. And this is what a very simple example between Adam and Isha. Isha came to be the bone of bone and flesh of flesh of the same Adam. The church, what we are now, partaking the divine nature of Lord God, having in us the divine nature of Lord God, having that ability and authority for us from the divine nature of Lord God, we are now from Lord's rib, the last Adam, or what you call the second Adam in your English. We have come in from him, and we have to be that holy ones to the Lord. It is binding for us to be, as he says in 1 John 3, 9, to teach that you have the sperma of Christ. That's the Greek. And hence we have that sperm of Christ and it is binding for us to partake in the elements of the Lord God's divine nature. There is no way we can continue in sin. There is no way that we can daub these hearers with untempered mortar rather than teaching them the great fiery fire of the law of the word of God. You have to be either an unbeliever not to change and you may be walking in the standards of unbeliever because the word of Lord God says, love your enemies. How many of them they would love their own brothers far less they would love the enemies. They don't have love being born to one mother and father on this earthly lineage. How would you love your enemies? Then it meant to say clearly you are not born again in the Lord. The way how we looked at incident between Loth and Abraham Loth and Abraham divided because they had some flock fight. And afterwards, when the wrath of the Lord God is abiding upon Sodom and Gomorrah, what did Abraham do? He pleaded for at least ten, if you have, will you spare me, O Lord? Once again, I am taking this step to come unto thy grace. Once again, he claims, from fifty to forty to thirty to twenty, and at last he says ten, and then Lord God departs, giving him the chance. Because he knew Lot, Lot wife, and two children, followed by another two men, if ever they would be married. But there were not even this four or five to be saved. And what we look over there, a man pleading, though he had a fought and left. But today, since you are not born again like Abraham, you don't have the love to pray for your perishing souls. It clearly shows that you are not been born from the last Adam rib. The last Adam shares in the standards of high holiness. We look that, therefore, he gives for us, and dikaya sune kai hosietes te salatia, making us to wear the new image, the new clothes, made in the holiness and in the standards of great righteousness of Christ. Because this is fire-insulated clothes. 
You reach the word of Lord God, already you are there in the fire insulated clothes and you know that you have to change. And you'll completely kill off, and you'll completely kill off those things which are not agreeable to that high holiness of Jehovah. And that includes, if you truly love him, the word agape over there goes to teach for us a paramour love. If you love him, like the man who was ordered John the Baptist had to be beheaded because he was having a paramour love towards his brother's wife. That's a very strong love, paramour love. So he said, if you love me in that way, if you love me in the standards, first your husband was the world, but now you are no longer to the world, but you are to me, Christ. Your former husband is dead, and I have you knew such, pa such paramour love, a love which is so pure and clear. Do you love me with the same love? If you love me, then guard my commandments. Under that fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God, guard his commandments. But the point arises for us, do you really love the Lord? Do you really respect the fiery fire of the law? Today you may fail to understand what is the fiery fire of the law of the Lord of, of the word of Lord God, but tomorrow you have to face it at the judgment seat of Christ. And therefore we find in First Peter chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, giving once again a great caution for us. If the judgment begins first from the home of the believers, and if there are very few who could be hardly saved, scarcely saved, the righteous ones, how about the Asabians, he claims, and how about the Harmartias, the sinners? When you yourself to be called as a Dikaya ones, the righteous ones, it's very rare for you and you to be saved. That is what to save back your works on this earth, to save back that you are really a believer in Christ. Therefore, he says in Second Timothy, while he's writing the dying declaration for us, anyone who has been named in Christ, what do they do? They depart from iniquity. They don't have anything fellowship with iniquity. Iniquity is like a protection for you not to obey the fiery fire of the law to enter in your soul and to burn you. That's very simple. That iniquity requires, or that iniquity organizes in two standards. One is called as the standards of arrogance. The other one is called as courtier or darkness to be ignorant about the divine things. That's how you become blind and iniquity. You don't operate or make the word of God to burn in you. And you develop cholesterol in your body to be burnt. That cholesterol will eventually lead you to heart attacks and you die. Because your cholesterol is not burnt. You're not making the word of Lord God to operate in you by burning that cholesterol. We ask you to kneel down and write the Bible to become a scribe while you are in ang, carry the yoke and the burden of the Lord God. You say, no, don't worry, iniquity has put a mark there. When that iniquity arises, cholesterol will develop. And people love to go for workouts to burn their cholesterol. Excess of cholesterol, bad cholesterol in the body. People will not come to a workout as Daniel knelt three times a day before the Lord. David knelt seven times a day. Or well, seven times a day he prays. When Daniel knelt three times a day, he has been called in Daniel chapter 10 in verse 19. Do you know what is that word meant to say for us? You haven't really looked at in the Hebrew so that you could quote simply as greatly beloved one of the Lord. You have to look that in Daniel chapter 10. In verse 19, he says that, And said, O man, greatly beloved. The word man is ish. That meant to say the one what we have to come to the image of God, what he has been created before the fall of man. The word ish is different from Adam, and that Adam is also different from Enosh. But ish, man of God, meant to say, who has come now to the reality standards of operating trinity in triparate soul and spirit of this man in the flesh. So he says, greatly beloved. You know what the word greatly beloved meant to say? Come out. 
And the word kemad meant to say desirable one. It comes from the origin called as kemad. And it meant to say the one who is beautiful, desirable, pleasant one, and the one who gives him a covetousness nature to covet him, to delight in him, to have great desire as a precious one for the Lord. You are really not able to understand what is that word greatly beloved meant to be in Christ. Three times a day in knelt as usual and prayed to the Lord. But there are people who don't do that today even once. Cholesterol builds up. They don't want the fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God to enter in. Yet they go for the standards of burning out their cholesterol by doing workouts rather than kneeling down and becoming scribes and writing the word of God. And the exercise what they get to be called as greatly beloved in the presence of Lord God. You know what does it meant to say? The great desirable one, coveted one, as you love a girl if you find her to be great for you. As David thought about Bathsheba in the same manner. You love to spend time. You love to do the things. That's what desirable one. And over here, when uh, Daniel, in this chapter 10, when he put upon himself a chastisement to fast before the Lord for three weeks, not taking any pleasurable food, the angel of the Lord God appears unto him and says, O man, greatly beloved, what a word it is, cometh. With whom would you love to spend your time, the one who talks your terms? Or the one who is in the likeness of your same attitude. If you don't have the one who is in the same likeness of the same attitude of yours and to think and understand. Would you ever think you can talk to them? You can never think that you could be having a coveted nature with them. No, no, not. We cannot. The Lord God has given to us the standards of righteousness. He has given to us to be holy as he is holy. He has given to us the things which are pertaining to him forever. And he calls him a man greatly beloved because he has shown forth to a man what is the pattern of life three times a day to kneel. And tomorrow I don't match to this. How many times you all knelt before the Lord? You know the blessings in Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14. Barak, Barak, when you come in, when you go out, kneel down and pray and go out. Kneel down, uh, when you come in, kneel down and give thanks to the Lord. That is what Barak it meant to say. You will be a blessing when you go out. When you enter in, there will be a great joy. At least two times a day you can do that. And one time in your prayer for your Lord. Because Daniel did as usual as it was his custom to go and kneel. We read that in Daniel chapter 6. And this man Daniel was being said to be placed between Noah and Job. In Ezekiel chapter 14. And you think you can have your vigor and valor. You think you can have in the standards to work out your, your burnt fat. You think you can do many things against the word of Lord God, and yet do you know what the word of Lord God says? You are not obeying the fiery fire of my Christ. You are not making it to burn in you. And you are not believers. If you were believers, you would follow what the word of Lord God demands us to do. If you were believers, you would truly understand and tremble your master, as we read in John 10. The sheep heareth and knoweth the voice of his master. You are not believers yet. If you would have been believers, you would have grown up as grammatias, joining as disciples unto Christ. And there we read in Matthew 20, 20, not just to make disciples, but teaching to them all the things what the Lord of a God has commanded or mandated us. And if you're not living such life, enjoying in the pleasurable standards of the word of Lord God, how would you teach others? It's not just what you can take something in your text and preach. It's what you're living that you can preach. What are you practically doing that you need to preach? If you don't become the word of Lord God as a practical way of life of holiness to others, then your preaching is vain. Just throw it out. It doesn't matter anything for you. Even the one who has been sent to represent a king, he would read out 
you know, like the Sena Cherub we look in Isaiah 37, Rab Shakak or some other way you look that. So what did they do? They just speak the words of the king. That's the work you're doing today. You haven't become the word of God as we read in Jeremiah 1, 4. He is becoming the word of Jehovah to the people. You're taking the word and you're coming and reading it out, but you haven't become the word of Jehovah to the people. That's the problem with you all. Therefore, you don't make the fiery fire of the word of Lord God to operate in you. You're not making it to operate. What a sad thing it is for us to look. The reason why the church age is in such kind of a great apostasy rather than the people of Joshua and what we read in Deuteronomy 33.5 used four times in the Bible. The word meant to say the people who walk in uprightness. And for this Jehusharan, what he has given, we read that in Deuteronomy 30 to 15, and what it rejected and what it came to be now. The same thing with the church age, holy and blameless to be in the presence of Lord God the Father, because he has created, as we read that in Colossians 1, to be presented before his presence. Amomas, Agnaketas, and Agios. As Jehusharan, as an example, the people who walk with Lord God and become the word of Lord God, they failed to do their ministry and they went along to do what was right and perfect in their eyes and left the standards of Bible doctrine. And today they are kaput into the fifth cycle of discipline ended up in 70 AD of the first century until the rapture of the church they will not be reunited back to follow the 70th week of the Daniel prophecy. But the church has been still given grace called to be Christian under the name of my Lord. You know, Isaiah 52 verses 11 through 15 followed by chapter 53 gives you the entire fate of man on this earth. Yet you may become barren. He paid in full for us on the cross. And that's what we discoursed on that in Isaiah 53. He paid in full. The church is becoming barren and apostasy to the core and becoming unfruitful to the core. Because you are not yet believers in my Lord. If you had been believers in my Lord, the fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God would consume you, would burn you out. And you wouldn't be the same again of the past. You wouldn't be the same. If you are still the same, Remember yourselves that you are not born again to the Lord. The word of Lord God says a bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to exegete the passages. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God. Show yourself diligently approved. Document the examination of Christ when you rightly divide the word of truth and teach what the Bible doctrine demands. But you don't do that. You are not born again to my Lord. Therefore, over here we look a man greatly beloved. The man who has spent his days of his life on this earth three times a day to kneel. The man for the glory of Lord God ten days, he said, We shall not eat this food which has been sacrificed to idols. And for the challenge of the ten days, besides beauty and glory, he gave them more knowledge and wisdom about all the standards of aristocrats who have been chosen by the king to be in that kingdom. You stand by the word of God, by the challenge of God, he gives you this great glory, dear brethren. Therefore he says, O man, greatly beloved. And the word, what does he say? Fear not. The word is 3372, as it is meant to say, worldly fear. Why you fear about the world? Fear not. Anything on this earth would damage you. You don't fear. Nothing it would. At the same time, the people of Israelites is pleading over here. He says, fear not. I know how to save the remnant. Now, unlike 44,000 Jews out of the 12 tribes, I know how to save them. Fear not. He says, peace be unto thee. The word peace is nothing but, once again, get back to the word called as shalom. 
that is completeness, soundness, welfare of your health, prosperity, and having to be with you great tranquility from far or any other things, but with God, especially to be in covenant relationship. Peace be, he says, don't worry. Look upon my trust. Look upon my covenant that I could make with these people. And then he says, peace be unto you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. The word twice it has been used. And you know what the word meant to say, be strong? Kazakh. The word Kazakh, do you mean to say what it is? Daily acquiring strength. The word daily. Day by day you come to acquire the strength. As the people of Israelites were given manna to carry it every day. Day by day to carry it. Day by day to take it. So is the same principle over here. Kazakh, carry it, take it day by day. Again, he says, yes, be strong, take it day by day. One step at a time, day by day, gather in your spiritual foot, not weekly ones or monthly ones to partake in the elements of the Lord. That is for those who are not born again. Are you born again in the Lord? Then come every day to take in your Bible doctrine. Give the tithe of your time of your day every day to my Christ, two hours, forty minutes. If you haven't been born again, then cross-check your life. Either you're saying reasons, which is not yes or no, apart from that, any other reasons you may give that is evil to the core, saith our Lord. So if you're born again, then Kazakh, be strong. Yes, be strong. Kazakh, every day, take up and Take up your cross and follow my Christ and grow up in the word of Lord God. Every day, every day, he uses the word every day, Kazakh. What a great principle it is for us. Every day, Kazakh. And when he had spoken unto me, he says, when Lord God the Father speaks unto you to be strengthened or to be having that Kazakh in you, he says, I was strengthened. And the word strengthened meant to say Kazakh again. I was prevailing to become courageous and grow firm and to be as a strong one in the Lord. So I was strengthened, he says, and said, now Daniel is saying, Amar, speak, O Lord. The word Lord over here is Adonai. That is what in the Chaldean way of style, Adonai. Speak, that is what the bar. For you have strengthened me. You know, fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God could be taken only when you have been strengthened by the Lord's word. And everyone at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone have been called to be the kineketesis in this church age. They have been made as a new creation so that they can easily walk in the fiery fire of the law of the Lord God, which is nothing but Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and being controlled of it, grieving it not, squelching it not, waxing it not, but rather completely walking in it as a march of an order. And that's what he meant to say, I was strengthened, because it is Lord God who will strengthen us. That is when we are walking in the word of truth. You know, dear brethren, the man's, the man activity of psychology, if you could look, if you have to do some works on that particular day, what you assign for yourself, that it may be a small, small works. If you do it successfully, you increase your capability of the standards to say that your adrenaline pumps and you go back to your standards to say that yes I am now capable you achieve the second work you become more capable the third work still more capable and your adrenaline and the testosterone goes on to pump it up and the fourth one you'll become still happy you have achieved the fifth one as well you'll become still more happy and you have some great joy in your heart when you do that isn't it that's what the psychology teaches when a man builds up slow by slow in his works the assigned targets of that day, bit by bit what he does, and that's what it gives him a great joy, it gives him a great adrenaline, it gives him a great testosterone, and it goes on to give him great happiness. That's what he says. That's what the psychology of this world is. 
to be strengthened over here when to say when you take today one verse practice it in your life become perfect in that come back to take the second verse practice it in your life become perfect to that you know what a great strength you will have in you you walk in truth you walk in spirit you walk in uprightness you walk in great joy of your whole because on behalf of you there is a great exhilarating joy or rejoicing of gladness in the heart of lord god and that will be your strength that's what we read in nehemia 8:10 as long as you fail to fulfill it the exhilarating joy of jehovah or great rejoice of christ of a lord of a god as long as you fail on that so long you will not have that great joy that's what we read in nehemia 8:10 the joy of the lord is your strength do you know what the word of strength here is it is not kazakh it's called as maoz you know what it is it's a safe protection it's a place for refuge it's a strong hold it's a great place where like a rock you be there in the word of god he places you to be strong make firm strengthen you harden you and make you to prevail above everything else on this earth So how do you reach it as you reach your four five works in a day of your target one by one you do it and you have that confidence and you're reaching your joy in the same manner one by one command of the word of lord god not even to let go small things from iota to iota or carrera to carrera one by one command you fulfill it and that gives you great strength because on behalf of you god the father is having exhilarating joy and he cause you to have maos strength to prevail any circumstances on this earth without following and obeying the commandments or in fact indeed knowing not the commandments of lord god you cannot please my lord that's what we read in hebrews 11 verse 1 and 6 without faith it is impossible to please my lord god what is faith doctrine what is doctrine the mind of christ what it is being taught categorically exegetically from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 to know what were the affairs on this pale blue dot earlier of men who failed and to become the men of christ to be as the glorious one under this pale blue dot which is not the same after the appearance and coming of my christ on this world the star which appeared and coming of my christ in the form of the flesh the only monegine the only uniquely monegine eligible one to go to cross after his form of flesh god becoming god man and the people don't believe this and they love to have a talk on this saying that how could god become man how could god become flesh <laughs> god is immaterial we know that therefore we know christ of lord of our god to say that born in the spirit and that he was a true god because he was far away from humanity and in that he was true humanity in that he was god and people don't understand about this deity of my lord We are talking about the unbelievers men who love not to believe my Christ and to teach crucifixion as fictionized and not to be as crucifixion and they have all many stupid idiotic things because these people are not born again in my Christ and when born again men only are not able to have this enough kazakh strength under the fiery fire of the lord the word of the lord god what would be the fate of these unbelievers who would think they can understand the spiritual phenomena without believing in my christ or not having lord god the holy spirit to guide and lead them to teach the truth do you know you cannot learn the truth if it were not been taught by the spirit of god how to be under the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit you have to have the spirit in you how you will have the spirit of god in you provided you believe in my lord and savior jesus christ that's the moment itself you have been born again in christ as long as you fail to believe that christ our lord our god came for to save sinners among them i am the chief said the apostle paul followed by him we also say the same thing we are the chief sinners and if you don't accept that you have to have the righteousness of lord god to be credited to your account therefore we read in john 6:8 of sin they did not believe in the lord so how do you get free of your sin believing in christ that he is the only savior the one who has inculcated to us this righteousness by faith alone in christ alone because for by faith we have been saved of our by grace we have been saved through faith and not of works people love to do works and they love to be saved therefore they are not saved 
But we come humbly to say to believe in Christ and we have been saved. Because we don't have any works to be purchased with salvation by gold or silver. And when we are going in such process, believing in the Lord, that's the moment itself you have been born again in Christ. Born again in Christ, you have been their spirit controlled man for the first time and you grieve and squelch because you do sin either by thought, word or deed because you are still now not even able to drink milk. You have to be on a right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher who should train you up. But the evangelists think they have better pastors for them and they love to drag them out and put into some cults and develop cultisms. Rather than feeding them the word of God, they feed the wind and these cults will come out as war winds in the sight of the Lord. A baby needs milk. A baby needs the word of God to be fed. A baby needs to know from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 21, what is this fiery fire of the word of Lord God given in our hands? But they don't give the word. They go to give programs. They, give to, they go to give you dancing, singing, jumping, making all unnecessary idiotic things which are not orderly maintained in the churches today. You don't find any difference today in a church or a club. A church is a place for ground and pillar of truth. A club is a place where you sing, dance and jump in your aesthetics. That's why they made clubs. You go to pubs, you find out there. They come in the music ecstasy and they go to do it. The church is not a place. A church is a place where the things have been done orderly as per the word of God. So we need to look, dear brethren, it says for us, being born again in Christ, then you will be taken care by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all the truth, the, un the unction, the anointing, what you have. He will make you to obey the fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God, which comes from the mouth of Moses. Because he is representing the Lord. And as Samuel was being told, they haven't rejected you, they have rejected me. Likewise, Moses as a king gives them the instructions, which we need to read a lot many things from verse 3 and following in Deuteronomy 33. But yet what happens? They rejected and they did what was good and correct in their eyes. And we call those who do in their own eyes that which is steadfast and correct, not growing up slow by slow, one by one, one by one command of the Lord. If the Lord God says, love your enemies, Though it may be hard for you to do it, but practice it. You'll be strengthened to look the next fiery law of the Lord. Kill off the things of your flesh. It may be hard for you in the beginning. Practice it. Kazakh meant to say like a practice, day by day, coming and growing up, day by day, practicing it. Slowly you may learn. It may be hard for you to spend your time three times upon your knees in a day. Practice it while you are in youth. Carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord. When he strengthens us, then we can be greatly beloved ones of the Lord on this earth with complete strength and protection. The strength of Kazakh leads you to have the strength called as Maos, safety. Without practice, you cannot be perfect. The very English slogan the people quote, practice makes man perfect. Practice it. Carry your cross every day, follow my Christ, practice it. Join as disciples and grow up as grammatias, practice it. Do not let go the time. The time is short. And you have in this world the fashion of this world which passeth away to leading you out from the word of God. Practice it, the things which are needed for you to be done in Christ. The way I have you as a man in the psychological department, we read four or five works to be done and slowly increase your strength when you do it. Keep the commandments of Lord God in your mind and understand, as the rich young man came and said, I practiced them right from my youth. But one thing you lack, you did not practice to forego the riches of this world so that you could get the riches in the heaven which are imperishable forever. He did not practice that. He loved the world. 
and how hard it is, said the Lord God, to make such men to enter into the kingdom of God, but that we meant to say the things what you love in the world will make you to be far away, to join as disciples and to grow up as grammatias in the Lord. But at Christ our Lord our God says, practice it. Tomorrow if you are alive again, practice it. And today the past teachers should also practice it to everyday inculcate Bible doctrine. The intermediary link between the head and the body is the link called as pastor teacher in the church. He has to practice to exegete the word of Lord God every day. If not, they will be like the people of the time of Malachi who came to give the sacrifices, but they were unbelieving priests. You come to give your life as a sacrifice. You haven't come to serve my Lord. You have come to serve your own belly. If not, he would practice long back exegesis because of that fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God, which will burn you out and consume you out to the core. It will consume you out. If it hasn't consumed you yet, you are not born again in my Christ, irrespective of your theological degrees, what you have, irrespective of your ministry, baptizing many people, what you may think you have done. It, it is not what the people will listen about you. Lord God said to Apostle Paul, These are my crowd, these are my joy. How many disciples have you made? How many grammatias you have grown up? If not, practice it. The Lord of God is gracious unto them who love to rebound and come back to his will. But his wrath is against them who will never obey to the fiery fire of the word of the Lord God and burn themselves and come back to his will. He burns them out in the burning lake of fire forever. Because true believer will be a disciple. A true believer will grow up to become a scribe. And a true believer will make disciples. The question arises for us, are you a true believer in Christ? If not, Practice it, what the Bible demands. The fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God consumes us out. And if you still think you can make better things in this life apart from growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, then the time will come for you to regret as Abraham said to that rich man, Remember what you did on this earth, good things you had, but Lazarus had sufferings. The good things is your luxurious life that you are living apart from dedicating your life to the word of God, becoming greatly beloved once to Christ, nailing down three times a day. And evil life was that he knelt, he prayed to God, he did his work to God to be faithful. And he said, Remember, in Luke 16. Remember, and you'll have a plenty of time tomorrow in the hell if you're not a believer. If you're a believer in Christ Jesus in the heaven, not receiving your rewards, you will have a plenty of time to remember each and every day how you spent worthlessly the grace of Lord God, producing not the glory of Lord God, which is intended in our lives to become greatly beloved, coveted one of Christ on this earth. If you don't practice day by day to carry your cross and follow my Christ, you will fall back. And you will die sin unto death. You will love to burn your fat by going for your workouts rather than burning your inner heart with the fiery fire of the law of the word of Lord God and become scribes. We are really spending our luxurious life at the cost of unbelieving souls being perished. And we have to be very alert to wake up. The sooner the better you join as disciple and grow up as grammatias and spread the work in making disciples of all the nations. If you ignore still these facts, 
Let Lord God help you at the judgment seat of Christ. As in 2 Timothy 4, Apostle Paul says, Alexander the coppersmith made much harm unto me. And they must who went into this present evil world loving. Let Lord pay them back, he said. And he says in one word, Let Lord let not charge these things unto him. The reason is that he doesn't want anyone to perish. Because they were blind to the grace and to the love of God. But they were happy to lie on this earth. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Remembering the final words of Apostle Paul when he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, it should certainly prick our hearts up to what extent we are really making the will of Lord God the Father to abide in our lives. He said that Alexander the copper smith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be you were also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer to man, stood with me, but all men forsake me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. The things what Apostle Paul tends to say for us over here is that, withstanding the words of Lord God, rejecting the mind of Christ, that he says, I pray, let them not be laid to their charge, because they have forsaken the great glory of God on this earth. And then, tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, they lose lot, again to use the word, much more than precious things, what they think on this earth was important. Think about these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sotham Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond to my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in Wellingtonity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Continuing from Deuteronomy 33, the fiery fire of the law of the word of the Lord God. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, looking upon thy pale wonders of this world, what a great joy and satisfaction it is for us, O Lord. Not to fear anything on this world, except to fear that we fail to fulfill your commandments and to follow it faithfully all the days of our life in practicing it. Help us, Father, to be always your greatly beloved ones on this earth. So that's our it, Lord. Like Daniel, we also could be strengthened every day in thy word, walking in thy face to face in the word of God of your fiery law and practicing it. The sooner the better, O Lord, we burn off the fat that has been accumulated in our souls and spirits, having in us the hearts which haven't been circumcised. The sooner the better it is, O Lord, through the fiery fire of your word of Lord God to burn it off and to be useful for the work for which cause you are called. Help us, Father, the greater time that we spend in your grace, the greater moving from glory to glory to thy presence. To the section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten us and challenge us by this message. 
for the very purpose of your glory to be recorded forever, not only on this earth, even in eternity to come, even in the ages to follow one upon the another. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message which you have given for us. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.